So please welcome to the stage. It's so exciting to finally have her on the show. We've wanted her on for the longest time. Corinne Fisher! Guys, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> oh man, it's so funny because like I'm you know known around these parts for being a whore, and uh, but then I hear Kevin Allison tell a story, and I'm like, you're pathetic. Like you, what have you even done? <laughs> you don't deserve this. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm in a weird mood. Someone cat called my enamel earlier today. <laughs> Which was weird. I was like, well, I did get white in. Okay, anyway. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys a story uh, today about uh, how my vagina lost its innocence. Okay? <laughs> and I know you're like, well, isn't that everything you do every week? No, there's one specific story. <laughs> um, so I moved to New York City in 2003. That's why I seem a little bit tired. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, help me. Um... <laughs> And um, yeah, and, and, I, and I moved to New York and I always had known I was going to move to New York. I'm from a small suburban town in New Jersey and I just never fit in. I ne was never interested in scrunching my hair or going tanning. Uh, like the highlight of my, me my week was when I would wear these five inch platform boots that I got with my mother at the Canal Street Jean Company through the halls of my high school, right? May rest in peace. And, uh, <laughs> And I would walk around and everyone would just look at me like I had jumped off the screen from the craft. <laughs> That's what I, I, I spent my summers directing movies in my backyard. Uh, the most famous one, of course, being the Blair fucking Witch Project, <laughs> which was a spoof on the original, uh, but just with more fucks in it. I didn't fit in. I couldn't, I couldn't wait to move to New York City. Everyone in Union couldn't wait till I moved to New York City. <laughs> they were just like, get the fuck out. Um, so I had basically given a promise ring uh, to New York City from myself. Because some women, you know, feel tarnished if they have sex with too many men. I would have just felt tarnished if I had sex with someone from Union High School. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was... You know me. So up until the point when I moved to New York City, the farthest I had gotten was letting this guy that I met on the set of Dawson's Creek when I was an extra finger me in his New York City apartment. That's the farthest I had gotten. <laughs> and I didn't know, I really didn't know. I was very, very innocent. I didn't know anything about sex. I didn't know how it was going to be. I just knew that it was gonna be like super scandalous. <laughs> like that scene in Cruel Intentions where uh, Sarah Michelle Geller backwards dry humps uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan Phillippe, yes. And I was like, that's, uh, that's what it's gonna be like. <laughs> and so I moved to New York City with two goals. Uh, the first goal was to become a successful filmmaker, and the second goal was to fuck. <laughs> So, yeah, thank you. I did it. <laughs> Yay! I did it a few times. Um, and so, obviously, I had to get everything in order and prepare uh, for, you know, the filmmaking, but also mostly the fucking. And so, the one thing I decided I needed to do to fuck was to shave my pussy bare, okay? I don't know where I got... I think, I think it was just me acting against my mother because my mother would always walk around angrily anytime she saw, like, a picture on the internet or a movie, and she would be like, bald vaginas are for children. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, Mom, thank you. <laughs> And I get it, like she was a woman of the 70s, I was a young woman of the 2000s, and it was beyond her control. My pussy was gonna go, Britney, bitch. <laughs> I had to do it. it was, I was a woman, it was my decision to do with the hair on my vagina what I wanted to do. So I stole my mom's $2 Gillette razor, like not even, not even a new one. She, there was a whole package. <laughs> I, I took the one out of the caddy <laughs> that she was using <laughs> and I lathered my vagina up with a dove bar of soap. <laughs> we, were, I was a, we were from a simple household. <laughs> and I 
shave that pussy bare. That's actually still how I shave my vagina to this day. I have you know, and it's uh, it's better than waxing. Waxing makes me cry like a little baby. Um, and uh, so I did that, and then I rinsed the hair out, and I put it back, and my mom, my mom totally, my, my mom totally found out. She literally left me a note on my staircase in the same house where we lived together, being like, did you use my razor? <laughs> That's why I have communication problems. Um, and so I packed my stuff up, and away to New York City uh, I went, and I was very excited. And I hadn't been in New York City uh, to go to film school more than a month when I met the man who would become the first great love of my life, okay? His name was Jim. He looked like a tall Bon Jovi. <laughs> Uh, his family's net worth was six billion dollars. <laughs> and this was the most exciting part to me. He told me, I know Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> Cause I'm his stand-in. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> six billion dollars, who cares? Let's meet Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> I was very excited about that. Uh, and so my best friend Tommy was auditioning Jim to be uh, the lead opposite me in this student film we were making, Silent, on a Bolex. It was beautiful. <laughs> and uh, Tommy goes, well, you'll, you'll be working with Corinne, and pointed to me. And he looks over in my direction. He goes, ha, I'm off the project. But he was joking. Uh, he really just wanted to have like copious amounts of sex with me. and. Um, I thought it was the most charming thing that I had ever heard in my entire life. Like a snarky joke. Come on, I was, I was like minutes past 18 years old. I was very amped to have sex with this Bon Jovi, $6 billion net worth Ashton Kutcher stand-in model. <laughs> And um, I, uh, we, we started dating, and I very quickly realized that Jim was a pervert. <laughs> like, I had hit the jackpot. I was so excited, because secretly, yeah, I had wanted to date a pervert for so long. Like, I was attracted to the villains who tied the girls to train tracks in silent films <laughs> as they curled their mustaches. That is exactly <laughs> what I wanted to do. And up until that point, I had never had an orgasm in my entire life. Yeah, I knew like masturbating was a thing, but I just never, I was busy. I don't know, I just never tried it. <laughs> I wasn't scared, I was just busy. <laughs> and so I remember laying down uh, in, the, in the top bunk of my dorm room on the Little Mermaid sheets I had ripped <laughs> off my childhood bed as I kind of you know, gave myself over to science and let Jim, eight years older, teach me about my own body. And he was wonderful. I really couldn't ask for anyone who was more kind or respectful or knowledgeable about the female body, um, you know, considering he was a man. And uh, we, we did all kinds of things together. I dressed up as a sexy Christmas elf for him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I learned that when you give someone a hand job, the penis like kind of helps out. <laughs> like it moves, I didn't know that until then. And so that was fun. I got very into porn. Jim's uh, best friend owned a like porn DVD store in upstate New York. And he would send us boxes of vivid DVDs, which became my favorite porn production company. Uh, except for this one title that I was very partial to called Wet Cotton Panties. <laughs> Uh, they're on about 14 now, so check it out if you're interested. I think it's a very good title. And um, I let him rub ice on my nipples, and I let him pull anal beads out of my butt, which if you haven't tried it, feels like the cleanest poop you've ever taken. <laughs> okay? It's like all the satisfaction of a poop, none of the cleanup. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and one night uh, before <laughs> a trip to Las Vegas, uh, I even, you know, let him convince me that I could pee on him <laughs> sexually, right? And I have to say sexually, because I did, I had a terrible bedwetting problem <laughs> as a child, so technically I've also peed on my brother. Um, <laughs> but it was much different. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim, Jim led me into the stall shower of my Murray Hill starter apartment, and I 
pulled down my uh, cotton panties, they weren't wet yet, and, uh, <laughs> and I just like kind of peed over his hand. And I, I was just kind of proud of myself for feeling comfortable enough to urinate on somebody else without them being disgusted, without me being disgusted. I felt like those people that I had seen in those HBO real sex docu <laughs> episodes that I used to sneak down uh, into the living room while my parents were sleeping to watch. And it, it wasn't erotic, and I learned I probably wasn't as weird as I hoped that I would be, but I felt comfortable and I felt a deep bond with Jim based on that. Um, the one thing that Jim always wanted me to do that I always felt oddly uncomfortable about was take nude photos. I don't know, it was, it was before iPhones, it would be like an actual point and click, but I still had like very big dreams, you know, like what if I was gonna be Miss America? What if I was gonna become the first woman president? <laughs> right? You just can't have things floating around like that. that like that could have been my Janet Jackson Super Bowl nip slip if it <laughs> ever surfaced. So I kept it inside, I kept putting it off and putting it off. And then finally one day after we had been dating a little bit longer, I felt comfortable enough to do this photo shoot with him. And I said, let's, let's do it. And I took off my clothes and I felt, I mean, it felt good, it looked good. I hadn't been eating as much Taco Bell as I do now. <laughs> and, and, um, and I just began to kind of like do poses like Tyra, Tyra Banks had taught me on America's Night. They're just like teacup arms all the way. <laughs> Because, you know, who, who cares if you're naked as long as your arm doesn't look fat, right? <laughs> Just teacupping it all along. <laughs> and uh, I felt cool. I felt cool. I, for the first time at five foot three, I felt like a model and I felt comfortable. And Jim was really cool. He had like an avant-garde uh, sense uh, of art. And so he didn't take pictures of my whole body. He would go like piece by piece anatomically, like right boob, left boob, <laughs> vagina. Half your, and I, and I, I thought that was great. So if you put it together, it's like a weird nude ransom Picasso picture. <laughs> and, <laughs> And so, and it ended and I felt comfortable and I felt in charge of my own body for the first time really uh, ever sexually. Uh, and you know, weeks passed and uh, Jim was always kind of bored because he had so much money. So he used to do promotional modeling. And this particular week he had a gig for Best Buy's Geek Squad. <laughs> And all he had to do, this is promotional modeling, remember, not modeling. Um, and all he had to do was sit in this giant see-through square case in the middle of Union Square Park and pretend to type on a computer. That was the whole gig. Because like, I don't know what the promotional strategy here was. Like, we would just walk by the park and be like, mm, that guy's hot. That guy has a computer from Best Buy. Maybe if I get a computer from Best Buy, I will also be hot. <laughs> I'm not sure what the logic was, but he did that, and it, it was totally fine. And my uh, 22nd birthday came, and 22nd birthdays, or any birthday for that matter, uh, with a billionaire were always fantastic. <laughs> he would always walk in with a huge satchel over his shoulder like he was a weird Hot Topic Santa. And he would pour out the bag and be like, hey, Hello Kitty t-shirt for you! And another Hello Kitty t-shirt for you! I own every Hello Kitty t-shirt that Hot Topic ever printed and I will never give them away. One of my most prized possessions. But this particular birthday, Jim looked a little bit more sheepish. He was quiet, he didn't have any packages in his hand. All he held was a yellow post-it note that he pushed across the table to me in silence. And I looked down at it and it said, the FBI wants to talk to you about your vagina. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard that sentence, probably never, <laughs> hopefully never. And he looked up at me and there was a number written down, it said Wendy Lieberman and then a number and, and he was, and I said, can you explain this to me? He was like, Corinne, I am, I'm so sorry. Uh, a couple weeks ago when I was doing that Best Buy Geek Squad promotional modeling gig, I made a stupid lapse in judgment and I pulled up your pictures on the computer and I looked at them and I guess I forgot to log out. 
yeah, I was still, I was still so confused because, like, yeah, that wasn't the best move, but I don't think the FBI needs to get involved with your stupidity, right? And he went on and he said, "I know this sounds crazy, yeah, <laughs> but one of the other people who was on this promotional modeling gig with me was arrested recently um, for possession of child pornography and pedophilia." And so every computer that he's worked on in the past six months has been confiscated. And on this particular computer, they found photos of your right boob, your left boob, <laughs> and your vagina. Because they had been posted on Craigslist <laughs> by, I guess, that guy. <laughs> And so I was feeling a, a lot of feelings. I was scared. <laughs> I was scared because up until that point, the only involvement I had had with the law was when I was sitting in the park with my friend from college selling uh, T-shirts that said, Mary Kate Olsen took my spot at NYU. <laughs> and I got them confiscated by the park police because I didn't have a vendor's permit. <laughs> Okay, so that was me. That was my criminal record <laughs> up until that point. Uh, I was feeling confused uh, that, that men could be so stupid. Um, and then I was feeling uh, flattered that at 22, my vagina didn't look a day over 17. <laughs> and uh, I had to come to terms with the fact that I needed to call the FBI and claim my own vagina. <laughs> so I went to bed and I woke up very early the next morning. It was like Christmas morning, but only I was a terrified Jew. <laughs> and and I, was try I was trying to figure out how this sexual awakening had kind of turned in this into this nightmare for me because other people weren't responsible with their sexuality. But I, I took a few dip, deep breaths and I sat down on the cold linoleum tiles of my dorm room floor, which previously had been so much fun and carefree and photos. And uh, the, the, the phone rang <coughs> and it rang and all of a sudden I heard that really cool old sound that you don't get to hear anymore when the tape picks up on the voicemail and you're like, yes, I don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> And so I said, hi, uh, my name is Corinne Fisher. Uh, my boyfriend is Jim, you spoke to him. Just wanted to let you know that the photos in question are in fact of my vagina. Uh, I'm 22, I consented to them and if you need anything else, please just give me a call back. And I clicked off on my hot pink T-Mobile phone. <laughs> I was scratched up from other times. I was pissed at Jim and had thrown it on the sidewalks of New York. And I wasn't mad this time. I was, I was okay uh, because I had a new relationship with my vagina. I had a new ownership over it. And you know, maybe I didn't get a fancy box for my birthday that year with ribbons and wrapping paper. Uh, but I had my own box. <laughs> and it was a very youthful looking one at that. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys.